Kelly the Space Pelican. A celebration of friendships, adventure, and acceptance. Kelly the Space Pelican is a captivating short tale that's as meaningful as it is cute. The fun, playful story conveys friendships we all hope to have in life. Kelly is a full grown white feathered pelican with a large, brilliant yellow bill. No longer a toddler, and old enough to be on her own, Kelly's mum decides to send her to the space training centre every day for three hours. The space training centre is not too far from their apartment in Moscow, Russia. Kelly has been dreaming since she was little of becoming an astronaut and exploring deep space and even discover new planets. The big day arrives and it's time for Kelly's mum to drop her off for the last time at the Space Training Centre, where lots of other pelicans have been training for the space flight programme. She's not sad to say goodbye to her mum as she knows she will be returning home again very soon. Kelly meets up with the other trainee pelicans and soon makes good friends with Barry, Maya, Gory, Diddy and Donna. It would be the start of a long and happy friendship between the pelicans. They are told that they will be going on a dark ride at the Space Training Center to find out about how deep space is formed and the biosphere on Mars, how to make any repairs at the ISIS and then more training for the Hubble Space Telescope. They even have star parties or constellation study groups where someone points out where the different stars and constellations are. The pelicans soon find out that there are many rules that had to be followed in space. As soon as the training finished, the pelicans are told to get ready to leave as it was now time to travel to the secret location, a desert island located far out in the Black Sea. On this island, many workers have been busily putting together a huge new rocket ship and a launcher to transport Kelly and her friends on an amazing voyage into deep space. Kelly boards her flight on Pelican International Airlines and the others go by Canadian Bombardier. Kelly and her friends are so excited about using their new skills as astronauts and are looking forward to the space adventure to Mars and beyond. The journey will be quite long and eventually they all want to reach their final destination, Mars. They know the journey will be dangerous because of flying through flaming orange skies, asteroids and even huge downpours of acid hailstones. They were told that there were even strange alien telepathic plants on one of the planets. And these weird plants could even communicate to the astronauts without saying one word. Meanwhile, Malcolm, the golden retriever coach and astronaut trainer, explains to the pelicans about basic rules they should follow on their voyage into deep space to keep them safe and to avoid collisions. He tells them that they should not fly too close to the huge mass of rock called an asteroid, try to keep an eye out for any space junk floating around and keep away from the alien infested areas near Mars. Finally, the great launch day arrives and the weather's perfect. The night sky is clear and full of shimmering stars. When everything was ready, the pelicans put on their customized spacesuits and helmets in preparation for the long voyage to the first destination, the Hubble Space Telescope, and then the ISIS. 
Mars would be the last destination. The squadron of pelicans climb on board the rocket ship for their very first trip into space. Kelly has a last minute thought and insists that Malcolm the coach and astronaut trainer accompany them on their journey. They all agree as they are convinced he'll bring them all good luck. Besides, they would not dream of taking away a golden retriever's good luck charm. And after all, they liked him very much. He's a strong, kind and good-natured dog and always makes the pelicans laugh and smile. It's so good that Malcolm agrees to go with the pelicans because the voyage to the ISIS, the Hubble Space Telescope and Mars has some unexpected, wonderful surprises in store for them. There is life and lots of danger ahead. Kelly's life and the rest of the Pelican Squadron may even depend on the clever and inventive Malcolm, the large golden retriever. Three, two, one, blast off! With a loud roar, the engines blasted back and there was takeoff. The space rocket slowly lifted off the ground and all the Pelicans cheered and felt like they were space pioneers. The spaceship slowly lifts off and the strapped-in pelicans brace themselves in their specially designed space seats. Peeking out of the portholes, they could see how fast they were travelling. The pelicans peer down and there's nothing but empty space and earth down below. They looked both ways and could see the space training centre, the island and the Black Sea in the distance, all dwindling away till they simply vanished from view. Even the sky around them becomes darker, made by the rising purple shadow of Earth. The pelicans watch a close pair of faint, twinkling stars, sparkling side by side, just like tiny diamonds in the velvet sky. Strange and amazing nights lay just ahead. Already something had been seen, far off, in the distance. What is it? A huge lump of rock, an asteroid, weaving its way from behind the sun and getting very close to the spaceship. The pelicans knew that they had to alter their altitude and course to avoid a close encounter, or worse, a collision. Quickly, Malcolm tells the pelicans to manually change course and speed on the automatic control panel and make a slight left turn to avoid a head-on collision with the asteroid. Whew, luck was on their side and Malcolm saved the day as the spaceship sped on through the star fields, skimming right past the asteroid. Unfortunately, a close encounter with a massive asteroid had dragged the Pelican spaceship off course and they were heading in the wrong direction and towards the Forbidden Zone. Once again, Malcolm tells Kelly to change course again, to get as far away from the Forbidden Zone and soon they found themselves back on the right track. The Pelicans could see in the distance lots of flashing neon lights coming off the ISIS and the faint flickering beacon flashes from the Hubble Space Telescope. Along the way, Baya, Gori and Diddy are dropped off first at the Hubble Space Telescope to find out if any new planets have been discovered in the solar system. Kelly, Barry and Donna continue on to the ISIS to experience floating in zero gravity and also to use their new skills to repair the modules that belong to other countries. Ahead of them in the distance, the ISIS looms up. Finally, they are nearly there. Kelly noticed a small group of stars that seemed to be moving strangely. It was a long straight row of stars and all of them seemed to be the same in brightness. At first, Kelly's reaction was one of disbelief. A row of stars just could not possibly be there. 
and she would have seen them many times before as she was familiar with that region of space. There they were close by, and no blinking of Kelly's eyes could make them disappear. Without warning, just as they were approaching the ISIS, they realized the stars are following them, and their spaceship suddenly starts to change course, as if they are being sucked away from the ISIS. This was the forbidden zone infested with aliens that they'd been told about at the training school. Oh no, no one knew if the aliens were friends or foes. It was all out of their control and the manual control on board did not work when Kelly tried to direct the spaceship away from the invisible dragon suction. They had been kidnapped by unknown forces and had no idea where they were going. Malcolm, Kelly, Barry and Donna found themselves inside a strange craft. The walls looked like glowing plasma and everything was lit up by strange lights. A little grey insect creature with large black fly eyes approached Kelly and spoke to her telepathically about how he needed her and the others to save his planet from destruction. The insect tells Kelly about the ancient buildings on their planet and how their long vanished ancestors had built them. There were no plants, gardens or anything green and natural at all in those days except for homes like mini hills pointing upwards to the sky. Now the insects needed a lot of workers to manage their new farms and gardens so that they could once again have a good life. They said they had been watching planet Earth and wanted to be just the same but needed extra help. It was a strange little planet and the pelicans were shown the work that needed to be done in the kitchens and dome gardens. There were thousands of containers filled with strange looking shimmering liquid with all types of vegetables and trees growing in no soil. Malcolm, Kelly and the others were shown what to do in the dome garden and kitchen but were warned not to go to the area at the far end of the garden with strange and bizarre purple plants. If they refused to work, the insects told them that they would be sat pelicans. Kelly remembered the story about the telepathic plants and wondered if these plants were the same ones that they had been told not to touch or go near. Malcolm reminded the pelicans that they were pioneers and that they should try to find out more about these special plants and perhaps it was a way to escape from the insects. The insects were busy in the kitchen and now is the perfect time for Malcolm and Kelly to sneak off and go to see the telepathic plants. They were very odd looking plants with smooth blue stems twisted and turned around one another which reached up to an enormous purple flower. In the centre of the flower is a sparkling pink ball. The weirdest thing about these plants was their behaviour and as Malcolm and Kelly got closer the plants wobbled out of their way as if to avoid being trampled on. Communicating only by mind to mind, the plants explained that the insects never listened to them and that it was important for the insects to know that they did not have to worry about being like planet Earth or having lots of help and should just be themselves and nice to each other. The more they do good things for each other, the happier everyone would be. They should try being positive and everything would work out well for the insects. Malcolm and Kelly listened and agreed with the plants. They promised the plants that they would speak to the insects and would help them with their vegetable garden. They felt so sorry for the insects now and wanted to make a difference in their lives no matter how big or small. Malcolm told the insects to just be themselves and be nice to one another. The nicer they are to other people, the nicer they'll be to you. As for the gardens, 
the insects were shown how to produce 100 tons of potatoes and green beans from a small garden and lots of herbs, which the insects loved to eat. Time passed and they had to get back to their spaceship. Malcolm, Kelly, Donna and Barry waved goodbye to the insects. Off went the spaceship, soaring back into space and the Isis. And finally, homeward bound. Malcolm reminded the space pelicans that there was not enough kindness in the world and they need to change that by reaching out and giving a helping hand to strangers or a friend in need. No matter how big or small, the pelicans could make a difference and make lasting friendships, the chance for love and much, much more. They had already made new friends with the insects and this was only the beginning of their adventures in space. The end.